Hello, this is Adil bringing you into market analysis uh, perspective on the currency market, uh, trying to focus on the uh, euro pairs at present and uh, see exactly uh, where they are headed, or should I say the euro USD specifically, and see exactly where it's headed in the uh, in the next week. Uh, okay, so hopefully um, that will give us some sort of or shed some light on exactly where Europe is headed. Now, before I start. Um, the last speech that Mr. Draghi did at Jackson Hole was the same old, same old, where he was uh, ready to fight uh, deflation with all tools necessary, and uh, he, uh, he had obviously he had QE in the locker, and uh, basically that's his uh, that's his uh, well same old speech basically um, that. Uh, Bring it up here. Mario Draghi gave a fantastic speech on what's wrong. Uh, bear with me. Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Draghi softens tones of austerity. Uh, no, that's not the one. Uh, bear with me. Okay. So basically, uh, he stated weak eurozone growth two world's most powerful central bankers are nearing a translating gap in monetary policy when it comes to trading i want it all i want fully customizable tools and fast execution i want the complete trading package from a provider i can trust you can have it all with cmc markets Ben All right, let's kick it off with what everybody is talking about. In improving U.S. economy and okay, indications so this week, the Federal Reserve may be leaning closer to raising rates, provide the backdrop for the big central bank gathering in the Grand Tetons of Wyoming. Uh, we've been on the edge of our seats for Chair Janet Yellen's big speech. If you're looking for something new from Janet Yellen that's going to change the debate or move markets, you didn't get it here today. Oh, boo-hoo, but... We should know better. The dovish Janet Yellen has been advocating continued stimulus rather than a sudden move higher. Like Mike said, no surprise for investors today. Janet Yellen begins her speech by making the case that the labor market still needs improvement, but how much or how the Fed might accomplish that is a very tricky question. Here's a quote. As the recovery progresses, assessments of the degree of remaining slack in the labor market need to become more nuanced because of the considerable uncertainty certainty about the level of employment consistent with the Federal Reserve's okay, dual so mandate. That's his uh, Okay, translation. Okay. The economy is doing better, but there now, is still okay, slack so in the labor market. Um, excess capacity that's just not being used. Uh, Honestly, okay, investors so were really more focused on overseas, or, overseas or, issues or, today, or, Iraq or, and Ukraine. But remember, uh, there's uh, something uh, still uh, hanging uh, in the backdrop at Jackson Hole, and I'm not talking about the scenery. This is the beginning of the financial crisis, right here. And here's the doom and gloom. We're all going to die, Lehman Low, as it's called. And then up we go, and this will be the big debate. Just look at the. Oh yeah, and one more thing. group. So I'm always assessing the. There's the correction. Right, right. This is the correction. This is the 4.2 percent of two weeks ago. Quick, we're all going to die. USDJPY. There you have it. All right, the stock market, despite all the uh, global tension and even the prospect of a Fed exit, it's still on an upward trajectory. Right? The S&P 500 hit another record yesterday. The Nasdaq is at its highest level since uh, the 2000 tech bubble. Um, options traders, though, they say beware. Um, the gains have uh, pushed them back to uh, make their bearish bets on tech stocks. This is according to Bloomberg data. Previous support equals resistance. Obviously, we went past that. So for now. Our focus should be on uh, the horizontal resistance that we have here. Okay, and obviously uh, here. Okay, so these this is the horizontal resistance. So daily chart horizontal resistance which coincides with USD JPY resistance horizontal resistance here. Okay, so that's something that we can cross reference and corroborate that. And if we go to our four hour chart from a daily chart, okay, four hour chart obviously held resistance. Uh, has a bearish engulfing candle and a bear flag formation for now and the bull flag has failed so whenever a bull flag fails that creates an emotive move in the opposite direction therefore a bear flag and that's exactly what I'm expecting to play out so keep an eye out for that okay so if you have euro JPY and USD JPY into resistance what do you think uh, given the fact that the relationship with the yen pairs and the carry trade 
okay and the ampères and the U and the S&P 500 that obviously signals the S&P into resistance as well this is just using intermarket analysis so if you look at your chart the S&P 500 let me just load that up quickly then you'll see that um, your chart of the uh, this is my uh, quickly roll that up so the chart of the S&P 500 will I'm not sure what's happening here okay let's get that loaded okay so the chart of the S&P 500 will be at double top resistance so that confirms the fact that uh, we obviously have a uh, um, what's it loading up where has it gone okay so that confirms that the S&P 500 is at resistance as well so just bear that in mind okay folks so just bear that in mind okie dokie bear with me one second there we go right okay so yes so let me just bring it quickly bring up the chart of the S&P 500 and show you the the uh, correlation here this will be interesting one second as we load up okay bring the chart of the mice excellent okie dokie so we should be loading up now oh yeah 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 so we need to show of the S&P 500 here we go okay so S&P 500 as you, as you know is that double top triple top resistance okay so if we were to measure that against um, obviously if you were to measure that uh, against the USD JPY, then uh, as we all know, uh, that means that uh, uh, the S and P 500 is into resistance. Therefore, I expect the S and P 500 to break this channel. As you all know, we've got the volcanic ash cloud pending uh, over Europe. News of the volcanic ash cloud. That's an obviously uh, just something that I had uh, no noted here. Activity increased considerably this morning, causing the higher red alert to be issued. Iceland's Met Office said it is believed that a small subglacial lava eruption has begun under the Dinjukul Glacier. Uh, the eruption of Efijafajalakol and resulting ash cloud caused travel chaos and cost businesses billions of pounds. So let's make the ash cloud cost the European economy five billion. Okay, dollars with airlines, air travel, and tourism, obviously, companies hardest hit. Okay, so that's obviously uh, resurfaced again, folks. Okay, so keep an eye out for that. And that's going to cause, um, uh, obviously, econo there's an economic cost regarding that. So, again, that's further geopolitical concerns. I've also tweeted that uh, Lebanon and Syria both, if you go to my uh, Twitter feed, Twitter stream, that Lebanon and Syria both, have fired rockets so Syria fired into Israeli occupied territory Lebanon has fired into uh, Israeli occupied territory adding the fact that Hamas is obviously firing uh, given the fact that Russia Ukraine situation standoff remains risk off okay uh, we've had se se several secretarian killings in Iraq risk off so all that supports the dollar okay every all, all every every, uh, every bit of information that I'm providing so far is obviously supporting the dollar Adding the fact that the dollar is obviously um, ramping higher post FOMC, post Yellen, Jackson Hole. Okay, that obviously means that the dollar will obviously strengthen given these uh, additional events that are occurring over the weekend, uh, create a risk off type environment. Uh, obviously, that will then uh, impact USD, JPY, Euro, JPY, which will move lower. Once they move lower, uh, you know that um, the dollar obviously will gain strength, uh, gold will move higher, oil will move higher. And obviously the equity market will come off okay so this is just giving you a sneak peek into intermarket analysis this is something that i do on a daily basis and obviously forecast the markets on a daily basis on the live analysis service okay so uh going back okay so going back to my currency pairs and so if euro jpy is into resistance confirmed by usd jpy then that will put the euro into resistance as well because obviously they're all the same uh, family same group okay so 
or you can go to a 60 minute chart just to cross reference that and what do I notice in the 60 minute chart for Euro USD Euro JPY this is a trade that I'll be taking uh, hopefully uh, come tonight and I'll be going short on the Euro JPY okay why because you have this beautiful HNS formation which obviously is confirmed via the daily chart confirmed via a four hour chart confirmed via USD JPY and obviously confirmed via geopolitical events that I've already mentioned okay so looking at a target uh, from uh, 1.38 or oh, 13,800 down to uh, 13,760. So it's almost a 40 point drop here down to the 720 level. Okay, so let's keep an eye out for that with regards to the Euro JPY. Okay, so 13,720. That's the downside target, a 200 MA potential pivot S3 support. So that's basically what I'll be looking for with regards to that. Okay, so that obviously puts pressure on the Euro then, given the fact that Euro JPY is on the moving towards a southerly direction okay now bear in mind that that will also put resistance bearishness on the nzd jpy and the aussie jpy as well okay so bear that in mind not just oh euro jpy nzd jpy aussie jpy and that obviously will put uh, pressure on the kiwi and the dollar okay so now that we've uh, done our analysis on that let's focus on the next uh, risk pair for euro which is euro chf okay so let me just find euro chf here we go okay so let's have a look what's happening here then okay so daily chart remains bearish as we all know okay there's no change there four hour chart okay certainly remains the doldrums uh, certainly an argument one can make with regards to an inverted head and shoulders but given the fact that we retrace more than I'd say 75 well not on 75 percent yet but on the verge of 75 percent the right shoulder is not exactly powerful so certainly ind indicates weakness there again like I said inverted head and shoulder still failing so far because it's just this shoulder here failed to propel higher adding the fact that you got further geopolitical events and that shoulder obviously fail again so really just lower lows lower highs at the moment that dominate so there's no real uh, strength that one can uh, 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 put forward with regards to euro chf that will cause a euro to propel higher so therefore either neutral stroke bearish so therefore euro remains bearish the next uh, pair that i generally tend to observe and cross reference is the euro gbp okay so euro gbp let's have a look at this okay so euro gbp has had the inverted head and shoulders formation for quite some time now is holding previous resistance equals support and is in this in this region so this basically um, is telling me that the euro certainly does want to propel higher but there's no catalyst as of yet okay so overall in long term long term the euro uh, you at gbp certainly wants to propel higher and that's uh, but given the fact that uh, fundamentals don't confirm so first of all First of all, uh, let's just uh, focus on this. So first of all, uh, you have uh, Euro GBP versus GBP, obviously. So Sterling, uh, two volts uh, or two dissenters with regards to uh, the BOE minutes. Okay, so therefore Sterling remains in a bullish phase from my perspective, remains bullish, especially after the considerable sell-off that we've had. If I go to a chart of Sterling, quickly bring that up for you. Okay, so as you can see, he's into horizontal support, lower channel support. And has had quite a substantial sell-off so for, for, from my perspective i wouldn't like to be uh, have a bearish stance of sterling at this juncture i would focus more towards a short squeeze stroke move higher given the fact that you've got two dissenters on the boe minutes okay so and obviously obviously in the uncertainty regarding uh the uh the, the actual monetary policy or uh, mr uh, carney's stance as well given the fact that he's quite confused at present so that in itself should obviously cause sterling or a potential short squeeze in sterling okay so that's basically what we're looking at with regards to the euro so euro certainly has a a case for an inverted head and shoulders here even though uh, euro gbp should i say even though mr carney uh, is confused and sterling has had quite a substantial drop and has factored in all the bearish news with regards to wage with regards to poor inflation numbers last week and uh, obviously retail sales came in weaker than expected as well okay so that's basically my uh, my the situation I have. So I would not like this. I can't see this. I can't see Euro GBP playing out unless 
we have uh, missed well, the Bundesbank did say last week that it was all happy with well not happy but embraced uh, it welcomed a, a negative deposit rate but with regards to QE it wasn't a big fan basically it wasn't wasn't um, uh, supporting QE okay and given the fact that German data did come out better than expected last week that obviously strengthens their argument of no QE therefore that should in essence if there's no QE that should obviously strengthen the euro and then that could be the catalyst for the euro GBP to propel higher given the fact that sterling remains where it is if uh, poor economic data continues to come out okay and Mr Carney keeps uh, continues to talk it down or its peers continue to talk it down as well although the uh, the there's a lot of confusion with regards to wage price inflation on the one hand he states it's focused on wage price inflation on the other hand Mr Carney states it's not so he certainly needs to make his mind up okay so with regards to euro GBP it can move either direction based on obviously the policy from uh, Europe and obviously policy from uh, from uh, the UK but from my perspective given the fact that you are two dissenting voters all the bearish news has been factored into sterling I would ha I would be tilted towards a long sterling view uh, and given the fact that the euro continues to slide and given the fact that you've got geopolitical tensions and the dollar obviously remains strong okay uh, and Russia Ukraine situation continues the standoff continues if like I said if for example uh, the uh, there is uh, a peace talks that are successful and there's de-escalation on both sides then obviously that will help the euro and that will propel it higher and that that well that that may well be the catalyst that will propel the euro GBP higher given the fact that euro has a a stronger motive or a stronger catalyst to to propel itself higher which obviously will trigger this inverted head and shoulders so again you can argue both sides here okay so euro chf neutral stroke negative euro jpy negative okay euro gbp uh, slightly positive stance on the daily chart let's see if we can find any more clues on the, on the smaller time frames okay smaller time frames from my perspective indicates uh, bearishness why because you have uh, no higher highs okay you've closed this gap here gap fill resistance and now you have uh, a bearish continuation pattern so this certainly moves lower and that will send the euro lower as well okay 60 minute chart again no higher highs okay so no higher highs indicates or would uh, certainly argue one could argue that we're going lower and uh, that's basically what we have here okay so that's my perspective anyway so with regards to the euro gbp certainly lower in the interim in the long term like i said with regards to the inverted head and shoulders we could still be putting in this right shoulder here the right shoulder provided it stays above 75 percent right shoulder which will she'll still be good so certainly more consolidation due here uh, before we certainly propel higher most likely russia ukraine standoff obviously uh, uh, de-escalation there okay right bear with me okie dokie right so uh, now that we've uh, obviously gone over that uh, euro chf euro gbp and uh, euro jpy uh, and that basically leads us to the next one which obviously is the main uh, currency pair that we all look at euro usd okay so daily chart the euro usd uh, as you can see broken uh, i did expect um, a potential short squeeze obviously uh, from here and obviously here we were creating some down sloping wedge we were contracting and looking for a move higher that obviously didn't transpire even though the Bundesbank obviously remains uh, in the hawkish camp from my perspective obviously this move has continued lower I can't see any support until now the next level you're looking at if you look at a weekly chart the only support level that one can see given this break I uh, the fact that it failed to hold a 200 ma the uh, inverted the hns target was 1.4 down to uh, 1.35 so it's a 500 point drop so you're looking at 1.3 target so 1.3 is around this purple or key purple trend line so 1.3 is on the on, on the cards with regards to euro usd given the hns formation is in play on the weekly chart okay so if you go to our daily chart obviously this, this spells nothing but doom there's nothing bullish about this chart whatsoever and like i said 1.3 is the next target especially with regards to the federal reserve and the fomc and miss yellen's stance and obviously mr draghi's uh, focus on the um, 
a stark contrast between the two uh, central banks, okay? So whereas one's hawkish, the other one's dovish, right? So uh, obviously the QE carrot's been dangled, even though the Bundesbank, like I've explained, is, it remains hawkish. So four-hour chart, four-hour chart, obviously um, uh, failure to break. So if you look at this pattern here, uh, let me just again, show you. We had this beautiful inverted head and shoulders formation. So left shoulder, head, and this is a bull flag situation. Obviously the markets propel higher. That obviously failed. Whenever you have a failed uh, bull flag, then you you uh, have an emotive move in the opposite direction. Now we're consolidating and looking to make uh, a move lower. So that again supports the Euro JPY. Uh, obviously, any any argument for the Euro CHF to rally is no longer there. Okay. Euro GBP lower as well. Okay. So go to our 60-minute chart now. 60 minute chart of uh, the euro usd as you can see i have this inverted head and shoulders pattern which obviously has failed to play out after we broke the bearish flag so let me just get rid of that for now get rid of this get rid of this and basically all you can see now on the 60 minute chart is a bear flag and we are looking to move south with regards to euro okay so that's basically what we're observing there so and uh, conclusion Euro remains weak, a Euro USD a weekly target of 1.3 based on the HNS formation. Daily target, well, daily chart remains weak. A Euro JPY has an HNS formation, Euro GBP remains weak, and Euro CHF sideways stroke down. Okay, so that's basically the summation with regards to Euro USD. Uh, down we go, looking for 1.3 on the uh, HNS formation. Okay, folks, so. Risk on, risk off. Wax on, wax off. Goodbye now.